So I want to talk about get home bags. I've got a little bag here I put together. I want to go through the contents. Kind of talk about the different things I put in there. It's something I've been working on. Get into what is a get home bag. Why might you want one? But first I want to thank you for watching. Welcome you to the channel. Welcome to Two Doctors Homestead. My name is Daniel. We do a lot of homesteading and prepping videos here. I'm a second generation prepper. We've been leaning more into prepping prepping lately it seems like a prepping kind of time and it is hot it's a little more humid than I thought coming out here I figured I'd make a quick video got a lot of stuff to get done today but before we do that I want to talk about this bag I've been kind of working on a bag thought I would share some ideas things you might want for a get home bag so what what first what is the idea what is a get home bag why do I need a get home bag and the idea is you know, generally most people, we all, we leave the house during the day. You might have all your preps and all your food and your, your stuff at your house, but we all have to leave the house, right? Or most people do. Maybe you don't have to leave the house, but you leave the house, you go to work, you go to the store, you go to your friend's house, wherever you go throughout the day. If something happened when you were gone, you would want to try to get back home, right? So you might find if you can't just get in your car and drive, drive home that would be a normal situation but if it's not a normal situation if for some reason your car is not working if roads are blocked if there's something happens that prevents you from the easy answer of hey I'm just gonna get in my car and drive home if you had to walk home you might want a get home bag you might want a get home plan how do you get home from where you're at whether there's civil unrest whether protests or whatever it is whatever's going on EMP whatever might happen that would prevent you from just getting in the car and driving home you might need a get home bag so the idea of the bag is it's gonna have some of those supplies to make your walk a little bit easier and for me um, you know done the math and all that you know I like doing math on the videos it's gonna take me a couple days honestly to get home if something happened it's probably not a one-day walk so when I'm thinking about some kind of a bag it's gonna be what might I want to take with me <clears throat> if I'm gonna have to walk a couple days and for me it's a uh, mix mix urban and rural environment i will just say that i try to limit how many obvious details i give away but it's going to be a mix some of it's going to be urban some of it's going to be more rural um, and there may be some things i have in the car self-defense whatever it is they wouldn't be in the bag right but i'm just trying to go basic bag <clears throat> and get some of your opinions now i picked this bag this was like three bucks on timo just a basic cheapo bag kind of like the idea because it's not some big tactical draw a lot of attention it's just a basic cheapo bag right you throw it in the car you put it on your back obviously it's not going to hold up to a long-term rigorous wear and tear but for what i'm talking about i think it would be all right and it's small and it's going to be a little more discreet you might not grab as much attention with something like that and that's something you want to keep in mind with the bag which is how much attention you know how gray are you so a really simple bag here um, i'll unload it kind of talk through some of the different areas where i felt like i didn't put a lot of into and some areas that I, I felt i went a little heavier on and kind of explain why but let me pull everything out of here first wanted to show you that it did in fact all fit in the bag and in fact there was a little bit a little bit of extra room in the bag so theoretically i could have put some more stuff in here and maybe i will at some point and some of the things i'm still debating on whether they have a lot of value in the bag or not almost got everything out actually jammed a lot of stuff in here a lot of good survival gear now things like i know when we talk about bags people are like hey you should have cash in there you know i'm having my wallet with me is my assumption in this so there's some things i have and some things i don't have and i think i'm probably organized enough to go through this so one of the first things I thought would be good in the get home bag is going to be a way to charge the phone. So there's a cord in here somewhere, but just a basic solar, right? Basic solar charger. 
for the cell phone. I'm going to want to keep my communications going, depending on the situation. You don't know what comms, what cell phone signals are going to be like, but some way to charge your phone, probably not a bad idea, right? You want to stay in communication as much as possible. And, you know, cell phone batteries don't last very long nowadays. Yeah, the cord's in there. So some way to charge the cell phone seemed to be a good sort of number one. Keep your communication going. If you need to call out, if you need to let people know what you're doing, assuming cell phones work, cell phone communication, some kind of way to charge your cell phone seemed good. And then the second one, of course, is first aid. This is just a, a little basic first aid kit. I did want to go with a much larger first aid kit. Honestly, I tend to lean first aid pretty heavy. Um, that wasn't really going to be an option. So just based on the size of the bag and the first aid kit was probably as big as the bag. But this is just a simple, right? Simple first aid kit has the bandages and whatnot that you might need. So basic, really basic first aid. So communications, some way to charge your phone. First aid seemed like two good solid options in any situation. Um, next one I pulled was light. Could be nighttime. So I've got a basic glow stick and then a little hand crank little hand crank flashlight I did a video on this so something that you don't have to worry about the battery you know is the battery gonna die just a basic little flashlight my phone's already got a flashlight I have other flashlights but this I wanted to throw in there it's solar solar or hand crank so depending on the situation you get the little flashlight out right doesn't hurt to have clips on your pack might give you some visibility at night something like that so I've got my flashlight got my glow stick and the same thing on a glow stick you know if you're trying to not get hit by cars you can hang it on your pack lit up if you're trying to be a little more discreet maybe you don't do that you can use it mark locations and whatnot so glow stick is absolutely a good idea and they can last for a while they have a pretty good pretty good shelf life i was wondering if this had it written on there i don't know that it does i'm sure they do expire at some point but generally they're going to last a long time it's just really cheap basic light source so next thing I would say I would go to here is navigation. Now for me, I know pretty much have a pretty good idea how I would walk home, even if it's going to maybe take a couple days, depending on the situation. But what if a road's blocked? What if you're going off road? Probably good to have some kind of a compass, some way so you know direction. Unless it's just entirely obvious, you should have a good general sense. Hey, I live south of where I work, or I live north or east. Compass, probably not a bad idea especially if you got to change up your routes maybe there's road blockages anything like that right so compass not entirely a bad idea um, went for some sanitation which is just a little toilet paper tablet so might have to go to the bathroom at some point wipe your hands wipe the sweat off you this is kicking me i wasn't expecting this much humidity out here but some toilet paper tablets basic sanitation is not a bad idea and I threw in kind of a survival spoon, and I'm not sure this would really come up, but it's got a bottle opener, it's got a fork, it's got a little little knife and everything like that. So maybe a little survival spoon might find some food along the way. Spoon didn't seem like a bad idea, and that doesn't take up a lot of space or a lot of weight. So I threw the survival spoon in there. So let's jump into more of your standard prepper type items. Since I know I'm going to be more than a day I went kind of heavy on the portable shelter, right? So I've got a Life Bivy, which is basically just a heavy duty emergency blanket. So probably gonna have to spend the night somewhere in this hike. So Life Bivy would be my go-to. But then I went back up. I put two emergency blankets in here, right? Once again, don't take up a lot of space. And generally these aren't very expensive. They're not heavy. So two emergency blankets plus the life bivy. So it might be sleeping on the side of the road or something like that. Could be getting rained on, you don't really know. So I went a little heavy on the shelter. Um, also put in a poncho. So this is just a camel poncho, not because it's camel, but it's because what I have. Rain poncho, it rains sometimes where I live. So rain poncho. And then also mosquito netting, because we get mosquitoes out here. And if you got to spend the night outside and there's mosquitoes and you don't have mosquito netting, that's going to be a miserable night. So mosquito netting for sure. At least try to cover the face or something like that. This is, uh, looks like four by four by six. So it's pretty decent size, 48 by 72. I'll let you do the math. Didn't get my degree in arithmetic there. Um, so that's your shelter. 
Right, well you're seeing left here. I'm gonna get to do the food and water last because I think that is debatable. So I have some tinder. You guys are always telling me I need the tinder when I show the fires. I've got a fire starter and I have matches. Matches, whistle, and then this would be a backup compass. This is a good multi-purpose survival tool. Even has a little striker on the side. So matches, backup fire starter, tinder and i generally have a lighter with me so wanted a couple ways to make fire once again in this scenario i'll probably have to spend the night somewhere at least one night so having a fire for that night could be useful might not be a good idea to give away your position depending on the situation and what's going on and exactly where i'm at at that time but fire is could be very important to survival it does get cold here in the winter time sometimes so in that situation the life bivy campfire could be good options so now i have some food and water here right these are high energy bars so i picked these up um it see it's one bar it was a little hard to tell they're not so much in english but trying to do the math um on how much food you actually get here what is it uh I don't recall on the calories on these, but I've got three of them, three high energy bars. One thing I liked about these is uh, expiration date is 2043, and I'm not quite sure how they pull that off. If that's legit or not, it might be. That's a long time based on the ingredients. Use these little survival bars are usually a couple years, five years, something like that. Not nearly 20 years and in the ingredients. First ingredient is wheat flour. So not sure how they pull off the 20 year shelf life. Um, the calories on the backs is 286. And I don't remember how many bars are in here. I remember when I took it, when I got it, I had to take it apart because I was trying to understand how many bars and whatnot was in here. But I threw three of them in here. This is probably a couple days, I would say, worth of food kind of spinning on that a little too much but i think it's a couple days worth of food certainly if i needed it to be a little bit at a time high energy bars if i'm going to walk for a couple days you don't necessarily want to have a grumbly tummy the whole time so a little bit of something to keep your energy up is probably a good idea a couple bars there and then i hit the water so i mean they say they say a gallon per day when you're storing water when you're walking maybe not so much this is not a ton of water these are each 4.227 ounces so really i've only got 16 ounces of water here so theoretically i might want more water and maybe depending on where i'm at i grab a couple bottles of water on the way it's just all about how much stuff i can fit in the pack but then i also threw the life straw in here so this is a life straw water filter bag so if i find water along the way i could purify it so really only going for a couple days here and not planning on weeks or a full bug out where you're going to go live in the woods with just this maybe some people could some water to stay hydrated food to keep the energy up water filter so i feel like i went heavy on the shelter with the emergency blankets the poncho the mosquito bedding and the life bivy because having to spend the night somewhere is entirely likely in my situation so i wanted to have some shelter options right and then you got fires good you got the compass some sanitation I said the spoon doesn't really fit with my energy bars but maybe maybe something would come up along the way where i want the spoon light first aid power so got a lot there um some stuff i don't have so if you've got any ideas if you see something that you think you'd do differently let me know just trying to build out a bag as i said it's just something simple something small lightweight throw it in the throw it in the back of the truck hopefully people are less likely to break in and, and steal this bag where i live that doesn't really happen but i know some areas that's pretty common and i've lived in areas where that's pretty common so as always hope that helps out thank you for watching and we appreciate you